Hi, it's me, Dave Marsh, the Spy Guy. And uh, is there such thing as a perfect movie? Well, I think this one can pretty much count. So those of you know, I hate to break it to you, but Sean Connery died yesterday. And he's in a hundred different movies. He was up to things. And one of those guys who actually managed to retire from movies. You know, most, I've, I have a friend of mine who's a, a site manager and he says, no one retires from this business. But uh, Sean Connery made a decent attempt at it. Uh, I was actually, during the pandemic, uh, one, another James Bond, uh, Pier yes, Pierce Brosnan. He did, he did a, a live feed of uh, GoldenEye and you can watch it where he does commentary and talks about the movie. And he talks about how he met uh, Sean Connery, the first time he met Sean Connery after he made, uh, while he was making GoldenEye, and he's like, I was just walking down the, like the studio lot of MGM, and then I hear this voice behind me saying, are they paying you enough? And he turns around at Sean Connery, and it turns out Sean Connery was going to MGM for uh, his, uh, to get his hair cut for free, because, you know, he, he was like that. He was like, hey, well, they still give me free hair haircut, so here I am. And they talked and stuff, but that was kind of neat. So you can go find that on YouTube if you want to watch more of that. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so I switched it up. I, this is actually the picture from my living room behind me. So I got a few movie posters I picked up when I, and what's behind me, of course, is Action Jackson. You can kind of see that it is a little blurry. I got Red Heat over there and Star Wars and Conan, the Destroyer, not the Barbarian, because I couldn't find that poster. So anyways, and I even have a little, another one, someone on the, the Ghostbusters thing, and I know it's not a frame, but you try to fit that thing in there properly. Okay, so I was going to talk about Hunt for Red October. So a little interesting story about that is I use my, the person I got to learn a little bit of writing for in the first place, I hate having to look at myself, so I'm going to just switch to a different I'm going to look at my Steam account and uh, anyways, so uh, the personal connection is my personal writer ben mentor is a guy named Jerry Purnell. I never met him. I know his son. We've met it and he's like a convention friend. He and I go to this, but he or I and I did go to this convention, unfortunately. And of course, as everyone knows, when you're watching this 10 years from now, you'll know we were all in the grips of, of insanity. And you'll be like, well, how could you have done that to yourselves when we're dealing with this much more important whatever crisis we're doing at the time? Uh, so met uh, his son, Phil Purnell, and we've he's a convention buddy. And we go to this convention and we play games together and talk about different things. But uh, uh, one day, um, my mentor, met, uh, Jerry, gets uh, is walking home. It's the early '80s. He gets uh, goes to check his mail. He opens it up, and there's this brown satchel in there, uh, like paper, like a book wrapped up in paper. So, I'm sorry, not a satchel, but whatever. And he tears it open, and it's a copy of the Hunt for Red October. And he flips open the, the page because. This is the first time this book is out, so no one knows who Tim Clancy is. And it's a note from him and saying, I always wanted to talk to you about, uh, about writing books, but I figured I should get my own first book done beforehand. And of course, uh, it became a big hunt for right. October says now this mega million dollar thing. Like there are so many different types of things. And, but uh, uh, they apparently became friends for a while and then, uh, up until uh, Clancy's first divorce, and then they kind of drifted away. But I always find that a kind of an interesting story. My six degrees of separation to Tom Clancy is also my six degrees of separation to Newt Gingrich. So that's kind of, who was also, I should say, love him or hate him, he's also a nerd. He's written books about alternate histories of World War II, so with uh, William Forsham. So there is, he's, he's in the community. Uh, so Hunt for Red October, what can we say about this movie? It is, I was, I watched it last night because as far as I'm concerned now, it's a, because Sean Connery died on, uh, on, in, on Halloween. It's now officially a Halloween movie and you can, everyone can now sit down and say, yes, we have a real Halloween movie like Die Hard for, uh, for Christmas. So. 
<clears throat> this movie is one of the best movies I can really say, like that just holds up. Uh, it is also one of the best book adaptations because I've read the book as well and it ties in so well. But there's a few weird things that are happening in the, the course of the, the movie. But let's just look at this. The, the cast here, I pulled up IMDb, like, oh yeah, I guess it also counts as a Halloween movie because Tim Curry's in it, right? Tim Curry gets to play an actual serious character who is not a joker or weirdo or anything. He's getting to play this person. The Russian doctor, Dr. Petrov. Who else do we have in this movie? This movie's got like an, an amazing cast, all the people who will be actors, 80s, 90s, even today. Like, did you know Peter Firth is in this movie? He's the, the intelligence, uh, sorry, the political officer Sean Connery kills early on. Spoiler alert. Uh, uh, you know what? I will just give my rating right now before just going into the general discussion on this movie. So this movie, I'll give it a 95 out of 100. It's, probably, it's not the perfect movie, but it's up there like uh, it. Conan the Barbarian, uh, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. are These are these great movies that are timeless kind of things. I guess, like, I'm hard-pressed to think of what a perfect movie is. What would I give 100% to? Like, Lawrence of Arabia I'm still watching, but I don't, I, I'd probably rate it lower than sh this because of some, some of the stuff. It's like, but... Uh, anyways... Look at, look at the people who are in this movie. You got Sean Connery, of course, Alec Baldwin, Scott Glenn, Sam Neill, James Earl Jones, Richard Jordan, who most people probably don't know, but he was in a great show called The Equalizer, along with, uh, so he, he connects in, so you, I'm sure all of you guys know of Equalizer via the uh, Denzel Washington movies, but Edward Woodward, who uh, is a, another great actor, more from TV than from film, is, plays in this show called The Equalizer, set in the dystopian 1980s New York City, uh, with all sorts of, uh, where he's a, an ex-spy who tries to help people, and the city is just insanely crazy and destructive, you know, like, a, like under de Blasio today. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a little political, ooh, whatever. Uh, yeah, so we got Richard D Jordan here, we have Peter, Fur a young Peter Firth playing a, a political officer, you got Tim Curry, you got Courtney B. Vance as Seaman Jones, you got, uh, uh, you got, Fred Thompson, of course, the future senator and uh, more importantly, DA on uh, Law and Order. You have, uh, you got the wife for five, all of five seconds being played by the actors who played uh, Beverly Crusher, Crusher in The Next Generation. So this movie is really over, the, just got a great cast of future and um, current and future actors that will be going on to great things. And I really do recommend, like, I just want to, like, just going through the IMDb page. With, I was just, like, watching it again last night. I'm like, holy crap, Courtney Vance is here. You Just all the different actors and all the stuff that's happening in this movie. And the fact that little things are set up and they pay off later in the movie. And I always love a good payoff. I do appreciate when plot lines are resolved and they do the callbacks to the earlier scenes. It, it just, that's great ways of handling writing. And the fact is, if you read the, again to the Tom Clancy novels, you see all these characters and you know where they're going. Like the, the fact that, uh, like there's a, a the pilot of an airplane who nearly gets shot down over over the Atlantic, and they just mention him. That's the guy who will one day be vice president when uh, <clears throat> uh, Jack Ryan becomes president of the United States. Spoiler alert: These books have been out for 20 years. You don't know what's going on. Not my uh, it's not my fault. Anyways, oh, I want to also thank the Planet of the Nerds for subscribing. It's great to have all my friends here watching me just try. So that's what's happening here. Uh, <clears throat> should have got a drink. 
uh, you know, might wander away and get a drink. So uh, November, it's set in 84. So they do do a couple weird things. They're like, they have this kind of pre preamble and they're like, you know, both governments will declare that this didn't happen. And of course it didn't happen and it only happened in Tom Clancy's mind. Okay, it's not the same thing. <laughs> Uh, this uh, Soviet submarine captain, Marco Ramius, given the command of Red October, a new Typhoon class nuclear submarine with a stealth caterpillar drive, which is a real thing that the, uh, the Germans trying to make in World War II. I don't know if it actually works now. Uh, certainly the Soviets ended up finally making a submarine that definitely was not detectable uh, by the um, Americans, uh, and similar to the American Ohio class, I guess they, it's a little unclear, but uh, the, Ru the Russians had these in the 90s and it was kind of like, ooh, now we can do all this fun stuff. And then of course the, the fun stuff is over because the Cold War is over and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, things. So he's supposed to be taking off this submarine off to the Konovolov, commanded by his former student, Captain Tupolev, which is, and, uh, things happen. I mean, uh, and there, there is like, we get to see Jack Ryan earlier in the movie talking about his Ramius. And he talks about how he's like this, the school teacher who's taught all the other Soviet captains. And then when he tries to, he's trying to defect and the Soviet, he sends his note off to tell them that he's defecting. And his, uh, his like, it's time to go kill an old friend. And there's just like, layers in the the script this is a the 90s was a, an 80s the 90 i was talking about this with any signore what is it with the 1990s and the late 80s where we got these great movies where we have great written movies where with all where it all ties together and i guess maybe that's one of the reasons why i hate a lot of stuff now is that they don't do it they're lazy star trek discovery is uh, or sorry, Picard is some of the laziest freaking writing I've ever seen. I don't care that you have the Pulitzer Prize. You're a terrible writer. <sighs> I digress. Uh, yeah, so you got these things, situations. You got the scene. Uh, maybe I'll just go kind of through the characters and talk about the, them a little bit. So Sean Connery is, of course, there, chewing up the scenery. I'm like... The cast in this movie, I'm not going to edit. I wanted to see the full list. Just give me the list. See the full cast because this cast is crazy. Uh, okay. Like Fred Thompson. Uh, and, and like the second in command of the, of the submarine is not even on this kind of list here. And of course it is. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Sam. Sam Neill. And that's something you got to realize. So Sam Neill gives uh, his character in this, gets this great speech where he's talking about like when he gets to what he's going to do. Well, when I get to America, you think they'll like, uh, uh, let me settle in Montana? And he's like, I'm sure they'll let you sell wherever you want. I will get, a, do you think they, will, uh, they require, need to have papers to cross state lines? I'm like, I don't believe that's how it works there. And, he, and he's like, I'm going to get two big American wives and I will have one in Montana and I will have one in this other state and I will get a big pickup truck and I will drive between my two wives. I'm like what great monologues like this do we get? It's true though, we do still have movies kind of like this. They're kind of underground budgets. You, know, you get to watch them on Netflix or Prime and they're like little hour and a half made for the the genre movies and they bring back people like Nicolas Cage or uh, or Die Hard Bruce Willis there and they make these hour and a half little kind of disposable movies but you know what those sometimes they have really great writing the, those guys are obviously the directors and the writers are obviously made in love of movies the same movies I do from the 1990s movies like Face Off and uh, what was that one with the nuclear bombs <laughs> anyways don't shoot at our nuclear weapon, <laughs> the nuclear bombs. And, you know, there are these great movies that were made at that time. And then, you know, I'm rambling. I 
but I don't care. But so Sam Neill has that speech. There's the, the little things where like there's a, just a, a kind of line. So why? How do we know that this uh, the Red October is a, a dangerous thing? Because someone in early on says, you know what? Back in the '60s, my dad made me build a bomb shelter in our backyard because some guy drove put off one of these put a bunch of nuclear bombs 70 miles off the coast of uh, uh, Cuba. And now this thing could do the same thing and we never know about it. So, and is it, is this a first strike weapon? And like Richard Jordan has one of the great, my favorite scenes where he's like, I'm a politician. That means that when I'm not kissing babies, I'm stealing their lollipops. Just like great writing, I give the movie this movie a hundred percent on writing. And it's just something like, like that. I guess this, they call them dad movies, so I guess this is a dad movie because we only get to see one girl, though she's pretty hot, and that is a young Doctor Crusher. Uh, oh, I guess we do get to see the the, the baby, but oh, sorry, the uh, Alec Baldwin's. Uh, daughter but that definitely doesn't count and if it does count for you you need to go get jump off a bridge <sighs> this the, the movie's really good and like you just get callbacks and you, th you get like interesting action scenes uh the fact that the the some you get to he uh, Alec Baldwin goes to the, the Navy yards and he's watching there. And I had forgotten this scene existed where he's like uh, watching the rescue sub get built and deployed. And then later on in the movie, when they have to dock with Red October, they have the rescue sub attached to the Dallas. So everything kind of, they're like, they're making these tiny efforts to pay off and they pay off and you just get the callbacks and you get the things with like the ambassador uh, in the office with the national security advisor asking for help. And the movie ends, you have, you're telling us you're missing two submarines. And of course everyone knows it's all bullshit, but I really think you guys just need to take your chance. This is the, this, I, as far as I'm concerned, this is a movie you need to watch every Halloween. It is now a classic Halloween movie. It is The Hunt for Red October. I, like I said, I gave this movie a 95 out of 100. Uh, and Sean Connery, is, everyone in this is doing their best to chew the scenery. And there are so many future major mega stars that come out of this that you see in all sorts of movies. And it sets the gold plate standard. These are the movies we grew up with. These are the movies we deserve. And the, the movies that A, never will have to be remade because you did it right the first time. And just good. A good, fun adventure. One of the best submarine movies probably ever made. One of the best uh, movies ever made and i suggest you go watch it so if you like this like share subscribe i'm definitely going to start trying to do more movies like this i have i watched uh nicholas cage primal the other day i would was pro planning on doing a review of it uh if you like others my friends you know go watch the planet of the nerds and he's ignore lewis oh, oh lewis on nerd report by the way and lewis and i are doing like morning shows for him, 10 a.m., 1 p.m. for me uh, during the week. Uh, I suggest you come along. Also, if you like this, you know, watch my uh, kind of rambling discussion of, of Utopia. So here I am. I've been talking for a few minutes now, and I hope you enjoyed this rambling spoiler talk on uh, The Hunt for Red October, the new Halloween classic. <laughs> That, uh, let me get the mood. Thanks for watching. Bye.